Well guys, if I've learned one thing from my last few days of testing the RTX 4090, it's that Jensen is a seriously strong dude. To be able to pick up the RTX 4090 and hold it straight out like he did at the GTC conference, oof, man, that takes some doing. This is a seriously big and seriously heavy card, but thankfully it has the performance to match. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today is the day we can talk about RTX 4090 performance. That's right, the big dog is in the house and I have been hard at work over the last few days benchmarking the 4090 Founders Edition for this review today. Honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot that needs to be said in this introduction that you don't know already, so we're just going to do a quick spec recap and we're going to dive into the benchmarks. So, built on the new Ada Lovelace architecture, the RTX 4090 uses the brand new AD102 GPU fabbed on TSMC's 4N process, though it's not actually a full implementation of the silicon. Rather, it's cut down to 128 SMs, giving a total of 16,384 CUDA cores. It also packs in 512 4th generation tensor cores and 128 3rd generation RT cores, while the number of ROPs also comes in at 176. Now, crucially, boost clock is also raised significantly over Ampere, with the 4090 packing a rated speed of 2520 MHz. Admittedly though, the memory situation is very similar to the 3090 Ti, with 24GB of GDDR6X memory clocked at 21 gigabits per second over a 384-bit bus, so that gives total memory bandwidth of over a terabyte a second. We can also see a huge improvement to the L2 cache, however, with 73 megabytes on the 4090, compared to just 6 megabytes for GA102. I do also have a quick pricing update for our UK audience. So the 4090 MSRP was announced at 1,599 US dollars. And initially we were told it was going to be 1,679 pounds here in the UK. Unfortunately though, a few days ago Nvidia reached out to us based on the ongoing situation with the pound versus dollar value. And the price has gone up now to £1,699 for UK buyers, so just something to be aware of. As for our testing today, we are using our regular GPU benchmarking system that is powered by MSI. And you can find links about this system down in the description below. It's packing in Intel's i9-12900K CPU, and that's paired with the MSI Meg Z690 Unify motherboard. We also have 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory clocked at 6000MHz, and all of our testing today was done using the MSI MPG 321UR-QD 4K monitor. Resizable bar is also enabled for all GPUs that support the technology. The only other thing to say then is that in this video we are very much focusing on 1440p but primarily the 4K data which will make sense once you see the results. However, for you absolute mad lads out there who might be considering a 4090 Ti for 1080p gaming, all of that data can be found on the written review on the kitguru.net website and again I'll leave a link to that in the description below. With all of that out the way though, the moment you've been waiting for, let's get into the benchmarks. Kicking things off then with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The RTX 4090 delivers 163 FPS at 1440p making it 63% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. Compared to AMD's RX 6950 XT though, the 4090 is less impressive, only coming in 35% faster, though do remember AMD GPUs are particularly strong in this game. At 4K, the RTX 4090 does pull away though, still managing over 110 
FPS. This now makes it 57% faster than the 6950 XT, 64% faster than the 3090 Ti, and rather impressively I might add, it's outperforming the vanilla RTX 3090 by 81%. Next, the RTX 4090 is also highly impressive in Cyberpunk 2077. At 1440p, it's averaging 144 FPS, and it's once more leading the RTX 3090 by over 80%, while it's also 60% faster than both the 3090 Ti and the 6950 XT. As we'd expect, however, it really does pull away at 4K, becoming the first GPU we've ever tested to offer a true 4K60 experience in Night City. Here, it is 78% faster than the 6950 XT, and still well over 60% faster than the previous flagship, the 3090 Ti. As we will see from a few titles on test today though, not every game scales as well with the new Ada Silicon. Days Gone is one such title, and while performance is still chart topping, the RTX 4090 is just 35% faster on average compared to the RTX 3090 Ti, and the 1% lows actually see an even smaller boost of 29%. At 4K, things do improve, and the RTX 4090 averages over 145 FPS. Compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Cyberpunk though, the 48% improvement over the 3090 Ti doesn't look as impressive, though it is still 70% faster than the RTX 3090. Next though is Dying Light 2, and this is a better game for the RTX 4090. It's still delivering over 200 FPS at 1440p, and that makes it over 80% faster than the vanilla RTX 3090. 4K resolution really is the place to be for this GPU though, as we still see over 120 FPS on average, with the 4090 now 58% of the RTX 3090 Ti, which is not bad at all. Far Cry 6 is next, and even at 1440p, we can actually see clear signs of CPU bottlenecking in this title. I specifically test actual gameplay rather than using the built-in benchmark, which is typically less GPU bound, but even so, the RTX 4090 is less than 10% faster than the 3090 Ti, and it's basically level with the 6950 XT. Stepping up to 4K does clearly help, and it does put things back in the 4090's favour, though scaling is still towards the lower end of the spectrum, with a 45% boost for the 4090 over the 3090 Ti. It's certainly not to be sniffed at, but it's not as impressive as something like Cyberpunk. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5 then, this is actually the game where we see the biggest performance uplift for the RTX 4090 relative to its predecessors. At 1440p for instance, it romps home with 180 FPS on average, and it's already a whopping 65% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti, while it's 72% ahead of the RTX 3090, and we're not even at 4K. I won't tease you though, the 4K numbers are superb. The RTX 4090 is still delivering 150 FPS on average, and it is now 80% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. That is a huge performance uplift for the Ada flagship, while the 91% advantage it holds over the RTX 3090 is equally impressive. Next is God of War, and here we see decent enough scaling at 1440p, though the 1% lows in this title do seem to hit a bit of a wall around the 90fps mark. Now, I'm not sure if that's down to the specific scene I test, or it's just a quirk of the game engine, but let's move on to the 4K results. Here, the RTX 4090 comes in just shy of the 130fps mark, and it's 54% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti in terms of the average frame rate. Though, once more, the 1% lows do see a smaller boost, this time of 32%. From one formerly PlayStation exclusive to another, Horizon Zero Dawn is fairly middle of the road when it comes to overall scaling with the RTX 4090. Now, hitting 240fps at 1440p is no small achievement, though 
Once more, the 1% lows do lag behind somewhat. Up at 4K, however, the 4090 really shines. Here, it comes in 54% ahead of the 3090 Ti, while it also leads both the 3090 and 6950 XT by just over 70%. So those are certainly solid improvements gen on gen. Now we come on to a new addition to our test suite, Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. This one is quite CPU heavy, though at 1440p we can still see a 44% performance uplift over the 3090 Ti. In terms of the average frame rate that is, with again the 1% lows being a much smaller uplift. At 4K, however, we really do see the 4090 stretch its legs. Hitting over 150 FPS on average, here it storms to a 73% advantage over the RTX 3090 Ti. And get this, it's now 98% faster than the RTX 3090, so almost double the frame rate. As for Red Dead Redemption 2, I have to say, I honestly never thought I'd see such high frame rates in this game. But the RTX 4090 hits just shy of 180 FPS at 1440p, coming in 52% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. At 4K, it is still pushing over 120 FPS, where we are now looking at a 57% frame rate boost against the 3090 Ti, or a 77% lead when compared to the vanilla 3090. Resident Evil Village is next, and this one does actually scale quite well with very high frame rates, with the RTX 4090 pushing over 320 FPS at 1440p. Now, whether or not you actually need that sort of performance for a game like this is another matter, but still, the 40% boost over the 3090 Ti certainly isn't bad. Though, compared to the 6950 XT, we're looking at a 34% uplift. Testing at 4K once more unleashes the 4090, and now it can stretch its legs over the 3090 Ti with a 66% advantage at this resolution. It's also 92% faster than the RTX 3090, so once more, it's not far off double the performance. Our last game of the day then brings us to Total War Warhammer 3. This is a decent title for the 4090, where it delivers a 54% performance uplift over the 3090 Ti at 1440p. The scaling isn't actually much better at 4K though, with another 54% advantage, though that is still a 74% lead over the 3090, and rather impressively, it's over twice as fast as the 6950 XT. With all of that said and done then, that brings us to the end of our per game benchmarks, but we do need to take a look at the big picture overview with our 12 game average results. As expected then, the RTX 4090 goes straight to the top of the chart. At 1440p, it delivers an average frame rate of 202 FPS, and that makes it 48% faster on average compared to the RTX 3090 Ti. Against the RTX 3090, we're looking at a 63% uplift, while it's exactly 50% faster than AMD's current flagship, the RX 6950 XT. You really do need to be playing at 4K though to get the most from this Ada Silicon. At this resolution, the RTX 4090 really does stretch its legs and it now comes in 60% faster on average compared to the RTX 3090 Ti, which I have to say is a hugely impressive gen on gen uplift. It's also 80% faster than the vanilla RTX 3090. Quite a staggering figure really, considering that GPU was the fastest on the market up until March of this year. It's also worth taking a closer look at the performance comparison between the 4090 and the 3090 Ti at 4K. As we can see from this chart here, while we do see a 60% uplift on average, some games do scale significantly better than others. Days Gone and Far Cry 6, for instance, are relatively poor performers, and while there is a good stack of games in that 50 to 60% range, we do see a couple pushing over a 70% uplift versus the 3090 Ti. As always, we do recommend checking out other reviews of the 4090 so you get as wide a set of data as possible. 
depending on the gains tested, there is likely to be a bit of a difference between relative gains versus the 3090 Ti and the 6950 XT. As for what that data means though, in terms of cost per frame, I'm gonna start by looking at the figures based on the official MSRP pricing, before moving on to take a look at current retail pricing here in the UK. At 1440p then, using the official MSRPs, we can see that the RTX 4090 cost eight pounds and 41 pence for every frame produced. And that is actually a reduction of 26% against the RTX 3090 and 36% against the RTX 3090 Ti. As expected, given the 1,699 pound asking price, however, numerous GPUs are better value for 1440p gaming, including the 6950 XT. At 4K though, the RTX 4090 does better in relative terms, where it's now offering a 32% reduction in cost per frame against the RTX 3090, and it's not far off 50% cheaper per frame against the RTX 3090 Ti. The MSRP data though really doesn't tell the whole story, particularly in the high end where GPU prices have been tumbling for months. So we actually found the RTX 3090 Ti currently selling at £1,149, which is a huge reduction compared to the MSRP of £1,879. Likewise for the RTX 3090 as well, which is currently on sale for £1,080, compared to its launch MSRP of about £1,400. Using the current retail prices then definitely changes the picture, with the RTX 4090's 1440p cost per frame now matching the RTX 3090 Ti almost exactly, so that is clearly less impressive. The 4090 is best suited for 4K gaming though, and the cost per frame does get better versus the 3090 Ti at this resolution, However, it is still only 7% cheaper per frame based on current retail prices, so that's not much of a step forward. Moving on though, it's time to talk about ray tracing, where Nvidia really was bigging up the leap from Ampere to Ada Lovelace, so we need to test it for ourselves. Just to be clear as well, for these four titles, we're only testing ray tracing performance, so DLSS is not enabled for these games. Kicking things off then, the RTX 4090 offers a true next-gen experience in Cyberpunk 2077. At 1440p, with ray tracing set to ultra, we can see an average of 78 FPS, where it is head and shoulders above the competition. Compared to Nvidia's previous fastest RTX GPU, which is of course the 3090 Ti, the 4090 is actually 76% faster. At 4K, where no other GPU can offer a playable experience, the RTX 4090 is able to keep the 1% lows above 30 FPS. Now, it's still not a super smooth experience, but compared to Ampere, this is a huge step forward. We're talking about an 82% improvement over the 3090 Ti and a doubling of the frame rate versus the vanilla 3090. Next up then is Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered and interestingly enough the scaling is quite poor here with ray tracing enabled. At 1440p the 4090 is only 26% faster than the 3090 Ti despite being 44% faster when ray tracing was turned off. As it turns out in this particularly CPU heavy game we are actually CPU limited here with the 4090 only seeing about 74% GPU utilization in our test sequence with ray tracing enabled at 1440p. As we step up to 4K though, we do become GPU bound and the performance scaling is now much more impressive. With the RTX 4090 pushing 113 FPS, the Ada flagship is now 74% ahead of the 3090 Ti, while it holds a 96% advantage over the RTX 3090. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition is next, and this game actually straight up requires a DXR capable GPU to run, with every single light source in the game being fully ray traced. At 1440p, the RTX 4090 stomps through our test sequence, hitting 216 FPS, which equals a 63% uplift versus the 3090 Ti. 
At 4K, we do see similar scaling to what we saw at 1440p, this time with a 64% advantage for the 4090 when compared to the 3090 Ti, while it's also 89% faster than the RTX 3090. Lastly, we will also take a look at Resident Evil Village. This one is not as intense with its ray tracing features, but the 4090 still scales fairly well at 1440p, where it's 50% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti, compared to being 40% faster when ray tracing was turned off. At 4K then, the 4090 is well clear of the 3090 Ti, this time with a 67% advantage, where it's pushing almost 200 FPS with this game fully maxed out. Time to leave the game benchmarks behind us though, and we're going to shake things up with a look at the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. So, on the surface, this doesn't look radically different compared to what we saw with the 30 series, though Nvidia has tweaked a few things and does claim an overall improvement in cooling efficiency versus the previous generation. There's no other place to start though than with the size of this card, as it is basically an absolute unit. It measures in at 304mm long, 137mm wide, and it's a full triple slot thickness. So this thing absolutely dwarfs most 30 series cards. Here you can actually see it compared to the RTX 3080 Ti, which itself is a 350 watt GPU, and the 4090 makes it look absolutely miniature. The sheer heft of this card as well means Nvidia has been able to increase the fan size and it's now got two 120mm fans. That's right, 120mm fans on a graphics card, while Nvidia also highlights the use of fluid dynamic bearings and the counter rotating fans. So the fan on the underside actually spins anti-clockwise while the fan on the top spins clockwise. The card is obviously so large as it needs to cool the new 450 watt GPU and this is powered by the new 12VH PWR 16 pin connector. A properly ugly adapter is included though allowing you to run four 8 pin PCIe power cables into the 4090 instead but let me tell you this does not make cable management easy. Display outputs are arguably a bit disappointing though, as there's no DisplayPort 2.0. Instead, we get three DisplayPort 1.4 and then one HDMI 2.1. Looking at some tests then specific to the 4090 Founds Edition, we're going to start off with the card's average operating clock speed. For this video, we're only allowed to share data for the 4090 Founds Edition, so a bar chart wouldn't be particularly useful. Instead, we're going to show this scatter graph for a real-time plot of the card's operating clock speed and temperature. Over the 30-minute run, the Founders Edition averaged 2,683 MHz, boosting up initially to 2,730 MHz before settling down just below the 2.7 GHz figure. Now, I would expect solid thermal performance from basically any NVIDIA Founds Edition, and certainly one this large. So it is good to see that GPU temperatures peaked at just 70 degrees during a prolonged stress test in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. The hotspot hit 78 degrees too, which is well within safe limits, and we also logged the GDDR6X memory temperature at a peak of 84 degrees. Stay tuned over the coming days as I will be testing a range of partner cards and we'll see how they compare to the Founders card. As for noise levels then, the 4090 Founders Edition certainly isn't loud, but it's not actually as quiet as the likes of the RTX 3070 Founders, where it hit 41 decibels on our sound meter. Default fan behavior includes asynchronous control of the two fans. Fan 1, which is the one on the bottom of the card that intakes fresh air, that ran at 49% speed, or about 1520 RPM. Fan 2, meanwhile, being the one on the top of the card, ran at 43%, or about 1395 RPM. I did also find that the fan on the top of the card was a little bit whiny in its overall sound profile. It's definitely not a big deal, but the pitch of this fan did have a tendency to cut across my case fans in different games. 
To hear for yourself though, here's a quick sound test. As for noise normalized thermals then, reducing the fan speed by 2% on each fan saw our 4090 hit 40 decibels, with temperatures increasing by a couple of degrees for both the GPU hotspot and memory temperature. Again, I've got no comparisons for this data just yet, but we will do shortly when we're able to test a range of AIB cards. Moving on to power draw though, and a quick reminder that here we do measure power draw for the graphics card only using Nvidia's PCAT tool. Now we can actually do this on a per game per resolution basis, which means we have power draw figures for every single GPU we've tested over every single game we've tested at three different resolutions. That is admittedly far too much data to go over in a single video though, but if you do want to see every single one of those charts, you can find those in the written article on kickguru.net. For now though, let's stick with the 12 game average figures over our testing. So what we can see then starting at 1440p is the real world power draw of the RTX 4090 actually comes in well below its 450 watt rated TGP. We do actually see certain games, including Cyberpunk and Days Gone, which do push power draw close to 400 watts, but over all 12 games tested, the card averaged 333 watts. Even up at 4K, the RTX 4090 is still not consistently drawing over 400 watts. Now, don't get me wrong, power draw is still very high for a single GPU, but across our testing, the 3090 Ti does draw more power. Right now, I really do just wonder how much of this is due to current game engines simply not being designed around such a large, high core count GPU as the 4090, but only time will tell. Sticking with the 4K data for now, in this chart you can really see how much variation there was in power draw for the 4090. This also includes our ray trace benchmarks with Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition proving to be the most strenuous load, resulting in 461 watts of power draw. Games which historically don't scale as well though, including Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Far Cry 6, do see much lower power draw figures. Using all of that power data then, we can also work out performance per watt on a per game, per resolution basis. Starting with the average figures though at 1440p, there's no two ways about it, the RTX 4090 is highly impressive. It delivers a 42% improvement over the second most efficient GPU, being the RX 6600 XT, but compared to the RTX 3090 Ti, it actually offers 85% more performance per watt. At 4K as well, the RTX 4090 is simply in a class of its own in terms of efficiency. Its next closest rival is the RTX 3070, but the 4090 is still over 50% more efficient, and that increases to 84% when compared to the RTX 3090 Ti. It really is highly impressive just how efficient the ADA architecture is, and we would expect this to scale even better lower down the stack as power draw decreases. Touching on overclocking as well, I do want to take a closer look at this in more depth in another video, focusing on the differences between using one of the included adapters or using a 12VH PWR cable. For now though, I did use the included dongle and we were able to add 260 megahertz to the GPU and 900 megahertz to the memory. This saw the card's average operating clock speed come up to right around the three gigahertz figure, though the benefit of this overclock did vary slightly depending on the workload. Times by Extreme, for instance, only saw a 7% improvement, while Cyberpunk only saw a 5% boost to frame rates. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, however, actually saw the FPS increase by 10%, while Resident Evil Village netted 8% gains. Either way, we're definitely not talking massive differences, but again, it will be interesting to see what we can achieve with a third party card. Before concluding this video as well then, I do also just want to briefly touch on DLSS 3, as this is definitely a big area of interest. 
Unfortunately, guys, I've simply not had the time to do a close analysis of this technology as that really can be very time consuming. I did manage to use it for about an hour, though, just subjectively in Cyberpunk 2077. And I have to say, just from a pure initial impression standpoint, it really does look very impressive. But hopefully I'll be able to follow this up with a closer look at the technology in the near future. So that brings us to the end of this admittedly rather long video. Hopefully it has all been worth it though, as in my view, there really is nothing quite like a new architecture and a new performance champion to shake up the GPU space. And well, that is exactly what we have with the RTX 4090. Being completely honest with you guys, I really wasn't expecting to see as large improvements with the 4090 as we have seen today. But compared to the 3090 Ti at 4K, it is on average 60% faster, which is a huge generational improvement. That's not even mentioning the vanilla 3090, which the 4090 is actually 80% faster than. 80% faster than the 3090. To put those numbers into a bit of perspective, when the 3090 first came out, it was about 45 to 50% faster than the 2080 Ti. But now the 4090 really has blown not only the 3090, but the 3090 Ti straight out of the water. Ray tracing performance is another huge topic as well, with the 4090 often scaling even above those figures that we just mentioned. Compared to the 3090 Ti in Cyberpunk with ray tracing set to Ultra, it's actually 82% faster, while it's over double the performance of the vanilla 3090 in Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. Now, I definitely do want to do a bit more testing, maybe a dedicated video purely on ray trace performance, but right now, it looks like you could pretty much turn all of the ray tracing effects on in basically any game, and the 4090 will handle it fine, which we couldn't even say for something like the 3090 Ti. Regular viewers will also know that power testing is a key focus for me in my GPU reviews, and no two ways about it, the 4090 is a new efficiency champion. It offers over 50% better performance per watt at 4K versus the 3070, which was the previous most efficient GPU, and over the 3090 Ti, it's about an 80% uplift in performance per watt. Bear in mind as well that this is the 4090, so as the ADA chips come out with even lower power draw, we would expect this to get better still. On that note, however, I do actually just want to say a quick word of caution. I know it can be easy to see the performance scaling and the raw FPS numbers in this review and get a bit carried away, but it's crucial to remember this is only a review of the RTX 4090. What we've shown in this video may well not apply to the RTX 4080s or even the rest of the 40 series stack. That may be obvious to some, but again, this is a review of the 4090, and to find out what comes from the rest of the ADA family, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Of course, hitting the market at £1,699 also means that straight away, the 4090 is only going to be for a very niche audience. The cost per frame data as well is also showing not a particularly large improvement in value when compared to the 3090 Ti, which currently retails for £1,149. That being said though, the target market for a 90 SKU I don't think cares about value at all, so I don't even think that will be a consideration, especially not when considering the sheer generational improvement on offer. If you do care about value then, I think it should go without saying the 4090 is not for you. Instead, we're gonna have to wait and see what comes next from the rest of the RTX 40 series. And of course, we can't forget about RDNA 3, which is launching next month. For now, what we can say is the RTX 4090 is a hugely impressive debut for the Ada Lovelace architecture. There's a new performance champion in town, but let's wait and see how things unfold for those who don't have £1,700 to spend on a new graphics card. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and definitely let me know your thoughts 
on this gargantuan graphics card down in the comments below. While you're there, please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell. And why not come chat with us over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic Fortkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video. So the 4090 MSRP was announced by Jensen Wang at 15,000, 15, no, that's not that expensive. This one is quite CPU heavy, though at 1440p, we can still see, the car just went past, I'm not sure if that would have picked up. Man, my nose is so itchy today. With all of that said and done, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. The MSRP data though really doesn't tell the whole story, particularly in the high-end segment. Oh no, that's not right. We can see an average of 78 FPS, where it is head and shoulders above the competition. Oh dear, please excuse me. Try not to burp. Okay. <clears throat> though Nvidia has tweaked a few things and claims an overall improvement. Oh bleh, 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 bleh. There's no other place to start than with the sheer size of this card, however as it is blah, blah. While Nvidia also highlights the use of fluid dynamic bearings. Oh my goodness. The card is obviously so large as it needs to cool the 450 watt GPU. And this is powered by the new 12VHP. Looking at some tests, of course, hitting. <laughs> Instead, we're going to show this scatter graph for a real-time plot of the card's operating clock <clears throat> It's good to see the GPU temperature peak at just sit. <clears throat> dear, oh dear. Stay tuned over the coming. <clears throat> Stay tuned over the coming days as I test a range of different partner cards, which we will be getting to shortly. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Now, I did actually found that fan two, the one on the top was a little bit whiny in its overall sound profile. Not, you know, hideously or anything. With Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition proving to be the most strenuous. I think there's a car going out. Very loud engine. The problems of living on a busy road. Why are the cars so loud, Alan? Either way, we're definitely not talking. And no two ways about it, the 4090 is a new efficient. The 4090 is a new efficiency champion. Efficiency champion. 